Angolan President Jose Eduardo dos Santos is one of Africa's longest serving leaders. He became president of the oil rich nation in September 1979. Civil war was already raging between the MPLA government and UNITA rebels when Dos Santos came into power, four years after independence from Portugal. We intend to establish bridges so that a ceasefire which will permit the demilitarization of UNITA can be established as soon as possible. But his reign will come to an end later this year. Angola is expected to hold presidential elections in August, and Dos Santos has confirmed that he will not run in the polls. Dos Santos has picked Defense Minister Joa Lorenzo to be the governing MPLA party's presidential candidate. But the 74-year-old is to remain leader of the influential ruling party which means he retains sweeping powers that include choosing parliamentary candidates and appointing top posts in the army and police. The MPLA won parliamentary majorities in the three elections since the end of the war. After constitutional changes in 2010, Angola does not directly elect a president, but the leader of the winning party automatically becomes head of state. If we all go and vote, nobody can beat us. During his rule, Angola has seen the end of civil war and an investment boom. Many citizens credit Dos Santos for leading the country to recovery after the end of its 27-year civil war in 2002. But some accuse him of being an authoritarian and failing to distribute the proceeds from the oil boom more widely. Tuli Shabalala, CGTN. All right, let's get you more insight into Dos Santos' announcement. Joining me live now is CGTN's Angelo Coppola. He joins us live from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, Angelo, does this announcement by Dos Santos come as a surprise? And how is it being viewed both in Angola and the region? Well, it did come as a bit of a surprise. We started hearing rumors late last year that De Santos planned to step down. Many analysts at that time dismissed the talk. And then we started hearing that he might have some health issues. And these were quickly dismissed too. Remember the, that De Santos has a tight grip on the country uh, politically and economically. So there didn't appear to be any reason for him to step down. Analysts now have adopted a wait and see attitude. But I guess all will be revealed come election time and whether there will be a Dos Santos name on the ballot or not. In terms of reaction from the rest of the continent, it's been fairly quiet. There hasn't been much response yet from either the AU or any other regional groupings, including SADC. We're going to have to wait in here and see what happens on that front. Maya? Now, Angelo, uh, Dos Santos has been at the helm of Angola for 37 years now. Uh, why would he be giving up power now and what are analysts saying? Well, that's the uh, $10 billion question, I guess. Analysts are saying that he isn't really stepping down. And here's why, as was mentioned earlier, we understand that the Santos plans to change the party's constitution, which up until now says that the leader of the ruling party automatically becomes the country's president. De Santos has indicated that he plans to stay on as party leader. And this essentially means that the president then reports into him and nothing really changes. Of course, he controls those key government appointments as well. Let's also bear in mind that there are two De Santos children on the national executive as it stands right now. And there's a daughter who runs the state-owned oil enterprise and some other resources businesses. So it's seen here as him not giving up power, but merely shuffling the board around. And that's according to the analysts I've spoken to. Maya? And he has, of course, already identified his defense minister, who is Joao Lurenko, as his preferred successor. Can we expect a, a smooth sailing for him all the way th through the elections in August? Well, uh, as we build up to those elections, we don't expect to see any interference or any public demonstrations. De Santos has ruled Angola with an iron fist and has squashed any upheaval or dissent very quickly. The so-called jailing of those book club attendees last year is a case in point. He controls the country, but perhaps more importantly, he also controls the media. So the messaging is going to be carefully controlled in the build-up. The same is expected for the elections and for the outcome, as there's really no meaningful political opposition in the country. Yeah. Angelo, thank you very much for that insight. CGTN's Angelo Coppola speaking to us live from Johannesburg, South Africa.